Hello again, I am Blunty, and I have been for quite some time now, and I plan to keep being Blunty for some time to come, so you best get fucking used to it. Fuckers. <laughs> so, <laughs> what was that? So today, when poking through my news feeds, I noticed a headline from PC Gamer that read, YouTuber reportedly requests $22,000 for coverage. And it tells of a Reddit post where a marketing dude from the developers behind indie games such as Soul Axiom, Master Reboot, and Infinity, none of which I've actually played by the way, was asking people about what just happened to him. And what happened to him was he went to an unnamed big YouTuber, hoping for some exposure of whatever new game he's pimping out for his corporate overlords. Said big famous YouTuber person then demanded $17,600 for a video with, quote, two to three talking points, or... $22,000 for those couple of talking points and a link in the description. $22,000 dollary dues, blokes. Sure, maybe not much in comparison to the millions and billions PewDie dude generates, but that's significant money to the likes of you and me, I'm guessing. I'd burn it all, of course. I'm shite with money. I would own a very nice new camera setup, though. Maybe a new hat, too. I need a new hat. Anyway. They don't name who the YouTuber is, so we don't know how big they are, or if they do or do not actually disclose the fact that their so-called opinions are for sale. The marketing dude wanted to know if this was common, or even worth it actually, when it comes to trying to promote a game. Cash for comment style, throwing money at a YouTuber with an audience in return for them saying nice things about your game. And there's a whole big buzz and controversy about that issue right now as the Federal Trade Commission just kicked the teeth in of Machinima for having its army of multi-channel network partner drones do a whole bunch of very positive coverage for the Xbox One. And the problem the FCC had with this is they were complete fucking scumbags about it and broke advertising regulations by not actually telling their audiences that their quote-unquote opinions that the audience thought they were listening to from someone they trusted was a complete bought and paid for pile of insincere bullshit and instead masquerading it, lying basically, as a bit of independent coverage. Now, how do you guys feel about this? Do you think it's sleazy? I think it's a bit sleazy. Do you think it's morally corrupt? I do. To ask for a bribe to say nice things about a game while you run a YouTube channel that's likely masking itself under the disguise of a review or let's play type presentation and not telling people you're taking money to say nice things about this stuff? Yeah, that's that's sleazy. Oh, and it turns out, you know, a little bit illegal. But for those who play fair about this, let's look at both sides. For game devs, especially indie developers, getting noticed in today's massively crowded market is very, very, very difficult. There is a lot of noise out there. A ton of shitty little games pour out every single day. And it's real tough to cut through the screaming, howling maelstrom of shit without relying on luck or tapping your friend who you met in an open bar industry event and just so happens to work at Kotaku or something on the shoulder and saying, Hey, how about you cover my, my stuff, please, mate? You're gonna need something to cut through it. Oftentimes, that something else is spending money in exchange for exposure to an established audience. And that's not a new concept. That's just how advertising works. Someone pays someone else who has the facility to expose a product to a potential customer base. But shit has changed in recent years. More traditional advertising is becoming less effective as we, the people, are just fucking so saturated by so much of it every moment of every day. And even there, it's tough to cut through the noise. Advertisers have been scrambling for new ways to reach people and are now recognizing the impact and power that a new kind of celebrity has. YouTubers, where once we were mocked for being YouTubers and, you know, being fat nerds in our basements with webcams and talking shite and stuff. Well, now it's big fucking business, isn't it? So in rolls the like of PewDiePie and the, the quite cross video game man to sacrifice their dignity and melodramatically scream at a camera for some 13-year-old's entertainment. In comes the machinima slaves of the world. These people have an audience that actually chooses to be exposed to the things they say, which makes them valuable to the people who want them to say nice things about the thing they are trying to sell. So, these YouTubers are simply supplying a service and access to their fan base in exchange for cash money. They have something the marketers want, and they're willing to sell it. Sometimes by profit sharing, sometimes by charging flat out fees, sometimes through some kind of affiliate reward program. There are lots of different ways to go about you know, getting money for doing that stuff. 
And so long as these YouTubers actually explicitly tell their audience when they're being paid to say nice things, that's all fine and dandy. Again, it's how advertising works. And frankly, YouTube ad revenue, the traditional core way YouTubers trying to actually make a living doing what they do are reliant upon, has become less lucrative than it once was. Advertising revenues have dropped. So it's not unexpected that some YouTubers would seek new ways of paying the rent by cutting these kinds of cash for comment deals or simply doing burned in advertising with a client's ad edited unskippably unblockably right into their video instead of using YouTube's pre-roll and overlay systems which can be blocked and skipped and closed and whatnot or perhaps by product placement being paid to show themselves using and recommending either directly or passively a particular product. We all need to pay rent. But so do devs, and indie devs aren't exactly rolling in cashola, so asking an independent developer for $22,000 for a video with two talking points and a link to your shit is pretty fucking hilarious. Deluded, even. I would love to meet the person who made this demand, I really would. Although maybe, maybe they're just doing what I've done on occasion, making a massively outrageous quote to someone who comes knocking on your door just to scare them off because the product they're trying to hawk is shit and, well, I don't want any part of it and I don't want to hear from them again, so I tell them I want, you know, $30,000 and they, they never come knocking again. <laughs> Although sometimes I've quoted high, not $30,000 high, but sometimes I've quoted high just to see what the response would be. Frankly, though, it's something I need to start thinking about more seriously. There is the matter of keeping a roof over my head and food in my belly. It's kind of important, and I should take it a little bit seriously. So how do you guys feel about this stuff? Is cash for comment okay? I mean, so long as it's clearly marked as such. How about burned in ads before my actual content starts? Or a little one halfway through, so you're kind of forced to sit through it just to get to the, you know, other bit of the video, the conclusions and stuff. What if it's me doing the ad read? Or what if it's something they've given me to edit in? What about product placement? Uh, you'll sometimes see a Razer Siren Pro that I use in shot on the microphone. Uh, that's not product placement in case you're wondering, but it could be. What if Razer or Blue or Rode paid me to have their microphone in shot every time I was on camera with its logo showing and everything? How do you feel about that? I mean, I personally like and recommend the Razer Siren Pro. It's a really nice mic, but even though it's my actual opinion, what if I was just being paid to tell you that more often? How do you feel about that? See, the trouble with all this, though, is while the YouTube ad thing is all automatic, I just click a button, upload the video, and you guys see ads, and I get some money. It's nice and easy. Doing the thing where I have to arrange deals explicitly with marketers and PR folk, well... That's, that's, that's time. That's, that's, that's time administrating and negotiating and maintaining business relationships. Time that I don't really want to spend doing that kind of boring thing. I could actually spend that time making content instead, or just watching TV or something, or doing whatever I like, but not boring business dealy stuff. And I certainly don't want to become a part of some fucking parasitic multi-channel network bullshit, or otherwise have someone else dictating how I get my shit done, or who I'm sponsored by, and all that kind of stuff. I am a one-man band. I like it that way. I really like it that way. My channel is all mine. I answer to no one. I control everything. I get to do whatever the fuck I like, whenever the fuck I like. I get to talk about whatever I want to talk about. And I'm apocalyptically reticent to surrender that freedom and privilege. So, chime in, drop the comment bombs, how do you feel about all this? And please, kindly do the thing with the buttons, you know, to help with exposure on my videos, so I get more views, so I get more ad revenue, so I can keep doing what I do and keep my belly full of ramen noodles and curry. We all have rent to pay. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.